Hey girl gang, it's Dr. Joy here and you are watching Delivering Joy MD. Welcome to Well Women Wednesdays. Today we are continuing our series on abnormal bleeding. <music> So as I discussed in previous videos, we have this acronym, Palm Cohen, that we're gonna be discussing. Uh, and each of these topics is gonna be a separate video so that we can keep this short and sweet and easy for you to understand. So in Palm, the P stands for polyps. And a polyp is actually an overgrowth of tissue in an area. So you can have polyps anywhere. You may have heard of people having polyps in their colon, uh, people having polyps in their uh, sinuses. And so you can actually have polyps within your uterus. So there can be a endometrial polyp, which is a polyp that actually grows on the inside lining of the uterus where our period um, comes from. There can be cervical polyps, which are polyps that are at the opening to the uterus. And these two can cause uh, abnormal bleeding. So when you have endometrial polyps or polyps inside the uterine lining, you can see really abnormally heavy bleeding and really abnormally frequent bleeding. So women may have periods that are lasting a really long time, or they may have periods where they'll have a period, stop for a few days, period comes back on, you know, and they bleed uh, even more. And so this could certainly be a cause for abnormal bleeding. The way that we diagnose cervical or endometrial polyps is through transvaginal ultrasound. So we use a vaginal probe that goes into the vagina and gets way close up to the cervix and to the uterus. And we're able to actually look at and measure the inside lining of the uterus. And a polyp has a, a characteristic appearance. And so you can see those uh, on that ultrasound and that helps to kind of make the diagnosis. In addition to ultrasound, we can also diagnose uterine polyps by biopsy. So there are biopsies that we can do right in the office with a tiny straw uh, that is called a pipel. And we actually can sample the inside lining of the uterus to see if we have a polyp. The gold standard, however, for diagnosing and uh, treating polyps is what's called a hysteroscopy DNC. So a hysteroscopy is basically a scope going into the uterus and it's a very small scope, very thin, uh, and we actually insert that through the cervix into the uterus and we're able to look around and there's water that is, that's pumped into the inside lining of the uterus so that we can see well. And we're able to look around and identify and locate the polyp. And then we even have instruments that can insert through that scope where we can biopsy the polyp or take the polyp off. There are even special hysteroscopes that uh, will cut polyps down and, and kind of completely uh, ablate and remove those polyps. So there are many ways to treat polyps. The DNC part basically means removing the endometrial lining with what's called a curette. It looks like a little uh, silver spoon that we actually use to scoop the lining out of the uterus and that is sent to pathologist. And the pathologist is a special doctor that looks at cells and tissues and they will examine that polyp to determine whether or not that polyp is completely benign or cancerous. The majority of polyps inside of the uterus or on the cervix are going to be benign, meaning they are not cancerous. However, in the case of women, especially postmenopausal women, um, polyps can signal that you may have a precancer or cancer on that lining of the uterus or even on the cervix. So it's really important to address these polyps when they're found and to sample them so that we know what's going on with them. A cervical polyp is usually found um, on exam, and so we may be getting ready to do a pelvic exam or a pap smear, and we see a little polyp poking right out of the cervix. Um, sometimes you can actually take these off in the office, but you have to be careful because they can get into some intense bleeding. So for the most part, unless I can see that that polyp is hanging from a tiny stalk 
when I'm doing a pelvic exam, then I usually do these in the operating room just in case we get into bleeding. You don't want someone hemorrhaging in the office, just no bueno. So uh, we can go to the operating room to do the hysteroscopic procedure for endometrial polyp or to remove a cervical polyp. And again, these polyps are always sent to the lab to determine uh, whether or not they're benign, precancerous, or even cancerous. So I hope that this really explains endometrial and cervical polyps. And if you have questions, post them down below. Uh, if you have a topic that you want me to cover during this abnormal periods series, make sure you post that below too, girl. I would love to talk to you about it. And we will catch you on the next video. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. All right, girl gang. Peace.